Welcome to Kazan's Academy. In this video, I'm going to talk about three stocks I'm buying in 2020. Let's get started. The first stock I'm buying is more of a smaller, lesser known company that doesn't target everyday consumers like you and I. As a result, not many people know of the company. This company is Balzun ticker symbol BZUN. Baozun is an e-commerce company that centers around China, targeting foreign companies that want to enter this massive market in China. Each national market is extremely different when you compare them to each other, and China is one of them. In China, companies have to constantly worry about online government regulations, almost regulations of warehousing, and all sorts of stuff like that. As a result, many companies need Baozun as a partner it's not only make an attractive website that can sell well in China, but also market the product to the consumers. Unlike the United States, where anyone can easily find places to market the product, in China, this can be quite difficult. Bosun also handles processes like order fulfillment, sales, and customer service. They warehouse products, which can sometimes be problematic, as we will discuss later. In the sector that Bosun operates in, it practically serves as a monopoly and is continuing to expand as a lead end-to-end -end e e-commerce company in China when it comes to e-commerce solutions. Baozun is currently partnered with a multitude of companies, including big names like Nike, Microsoft, and the NBA, but also a high amount of smaller companies that aren't big enough to get listed in the picture you're seeing. As far as growth, Baozun is on the top of the line, achieving incredible user growth for the service. In 2020, their sales are estimated to go 30% year-over-year, with growth slightly down from 2019 due to increasing tensions of the US and China trade war. Along with that, they're also going to be massively profitable with earnings expected to go from $0.88 a share to an average estimate of $1.41 per share. A company that is growing as fast as Baozun usually yields a pretty high forward P ratio of 40 to 70. However, the reason why I find Baozun so intriguing is their extremely low PE of just 22. However, this value comes with some negative reasons. One of these most notable reasons is our loss of a huge consumer, Huawei. This loss actually occurred long before the stock dropped 17% on their earnings, a report that led investors to believe that Baozun lost a high market cap partner. However, this leads to a massive problem for investors in Baozun. The company hadn't told investors that they lost Huawei until around 3 or 4 months later. As a result, Baozun is actually dealing with many lawsuits concerning the investment transparency right now, leading to a further dip in the share price. Another reason for Baozun's dip is a fire in one of their warehouses. The reason why I don't find this concerning is because this fire is estimated to have a loss of only $9.8 million, which is not much considering their $2 billion market cap. Now another reason for the dip in Baozun, yes there are many reasons for the dip, is of course the huge spread of the coronavirus in China causing China's market to be less attractive for companies to enter. However, I do believe that the coronavirus is a short-term problem, and over the span of multiple years, the impact of the coronavirus will not be too huge. Along with this, looking back to the other reason for a dip, is that in most lawsuits concerning investment transparency, the judge usually favors the company. So according to the probabilities, it is likely that Boston will end up being the company that comes out on top. And finally, the last reason for the drop in Baozun's share price is the slowdown of economic growth in China, primarily due to the tariffs implemented by Trump during the US and China trade war. Now the sentiment of the US and China trade war is going pretty well in the US with phase 1 done, but no time period for the completion of phase 2 anytime soon. Again, I still see this as more of a short term thing for China's economy and Baozun as after a supposed trade deal is completed or if a democrat wins the 2020 election, these problems should be diminished. So to summarize my points of why I'm buying Baozun is because 1. It's an incredibly fast growing company and it's quite undervalued at a 4p of 22. And 2. Most of these negative issues with the company are relatively short term, causing me to want to buy the dip and hold the shares for the long term. Now let's move on to the second stock on this list, which is more of a larger cap company that many of you guys probably know about. This stock is Boeing whose business is pretty self-explanatory as they produce planes for typical airplane flights for the mass market, along with their military side, with jet production for the US military force, 
with plenty of money in U.S. defense military contracts. The cause for such a large dip in Boeing stock is the two crashes of the 737 MAX plane that exposed Boeing's many issues not only in the plane but also the company. As a result, many airlines have canceled their orders for the 737 MAX and more recently, the internet actually exposed Boeing's workers' quotes about how horrible the 737 MAX was and how terrible the FAA was at regulating their planes, which ultimately led to the 737 MAX crash and all these problems that Boeing is facing right now. Along with this, Boeing also recently discovered an issue with the startup system in the 737 MAX's system, only causing a further delay in getting the FAA to accept the 737 MAX as a plane that can legally fly mass market airline ticket consumers. So when do these problems finally go away? Well recently Boeing practically changed the name of the 737 MAX to the 737-800 mainly to remove negative sentiment. They made a few changes here and there and here they are with a new plane. The FAA did announce that we could see the 737 MAX flying as soon as mid to late 2020. They've also taken out a massive loan of $13 billion from more than a dozen banks which should ruin their balance sheet in the future but prospects of the 737 MAX have gotten better as the air regulators seem to agree on the 737 MAX new design fix. To top it off, Boeing has also shown some demand in their 737 MAX despite these crashes. Ryanair, an airline company, already made an offer to Boeing for the 737 MAX and while the order didn't get fulfilled, it still does show that there is demand for the 737 MAX. Boeing also had the 777X have its first successful flight. The 777X, more of a luxury plane, retails for $420 million and has already seen a tremendous amount of orders from many airline companies. But it is still going through what the FAA calls a rigorous review. Whether you think that's true and whether the FAA is lying about this is up to your call. But I do think they will have a more rigorous review after the two crashes in the 737 MAX. Many of you are probably wondering why airlines just aren't switching to Airbus, the other main competitor in the airline production industry. This is because switching producers yields enormous costs, as an airline would have to train their pilots in the getting certifications for the Airbus planes or hire new pilots, which is incredibly troublesome, especially if your pilots already have certifications for Boeing planes. Now, despite these issues with the 737 MAX, I still see Boeing stock as a buy because over the course of 5-10 to 10 years, the 737 MAX issue would ultimately just be seen as a short term issue that will cause a short term dip but over the long term Boeing is still a great company and it will recover eventually. And before the 737 MAX even starts to get back in fight, the stock price would increase because of investment speculation and before all the speculation happens, you kind of want to get your investment into the stock therefore you can ride the rise of speculation and increasing analyst price targets, all sorts of things like that. We also can't forget that the airplane producing business is a duopoly and over the long term, Boeing will eventually become the cash cow it once was before. Now I also see lots of potential in the military side of Boeing with US and Iran tensions increasing. Iran is a country that is very far away from the US and the US would require many planes from Boeing for their air force in order to combat a company this far away. Even if nothing happens between US and Iran, we will definitely see an increase in military spending for the fear that violence occurs internationally. Boeing's forward price to sales ratio sits at 2 right now, which is quite low for a company that leads such a massive industry. This is a stock that I could see myself averaging down many times if the situation gets worse, but over the long term, I definitely see Boeing stock as a great investment. The last stock I'm buying in 2020 is FedEx. Now FedEx stock has dropped a huge amount due to increasing prices for shipping, poor earnings reports, and a fear of Amazon entering the shipping business after it announced that it no longer needs to partner with FedEx for shipping, as it has its own shipping business already set up. The fear of Amazon entering the business is quite irrational, as before Amazon was partnered with FedEx, their payments made up of only 2% of FedEx's revenue, so it's not really too much of a cut to FedEx's revenue, and to top it off, Amazon's shipping business isn't even big enough to ship their own products as half their shipping still comes from UPS. 
Despite all the issues going on right now with FedEx, their market share is still continuing to increase as time goes by, which is still a very great sign. Another reason for the drop in FedEx is a trade war, which has dropped their operating margin quite significantly in 2018 and 2019. The drop in FedEx stock has left us with a stock with tremendously great value at a 4 PE of 12 and a price to sales ratio of 0.58, incredibly low. And despite the recent downtrend, the company is still expected to have its sales grow 4% in 2021, while with earnings growing at a pretty incredible rate expected to rebound from $10.77 a share in 2020 to $12.45 in 2021. So as a long-term stock, I see the recent dip in FedEx as an opportunity to get in the stock, buy into the stock so you can hold it for the long term. This is more value play rather than a growth play. So that concludes the three stocks that I'm buying in 2020. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button or subscribe. And I hope to see you in another video.